to walk as close as we can with our God. You know, hearing God's voice, sharing our heart, seeking Him should be an all-consuming focus of our daily walk. But you know, the point that God makes in His Holy Scriptures in Genesis about Enoch isn't to show how spiritual Enoch was, but it was to show God's heart and make the point that all God wants is to walk with you. That is the point, that God loves to walk with mankind. But you know, I began to think, I was like, man, I look at Enoch, I look at Noah, I look at Abraham and all these incredible prophets and these incredible women that walk with God. I was like, man, can I ever have a deep relationship like that? Yeah. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Let's go. You want to be encouraged this morning? Come on, bro. You want to be inspired by the word of God? Man, y'all don't want to hear the word of God. In verse 1, 
It says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. In verse 5, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Come on, Brown. Come on. The, the Bible right here, it, it, it lays out something very, very fundamentally important. Yeah. It shows us that it is by faith that we can hope for the things that we do not see. Mm. And the reality is that when you walk in faith with God, you are able to see God's power. You are able to see God's glory. But you know, a lot of times in the world, because we always look at the visible things, the tangible things, that's what our eyesight gives us. But you know what faith allows us to do? It allows us and it gives us evidence to see the invisible, the spiritual. And it's, 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 a, it's an aspect of our Christianity that we must tap into as disciples. That it is your faith that allows you to see the things that are invisible. Isn't that cool? Come on, to see that man, like, if you don't see God, we don't see God at all. Physically, you can't tap God on the back. You can't say, God, give me a high five. You, I mean, God is just, he, he's invisible to us. But he portrays and demonstrates his power in our lives, in the scriptures, in the universe, in the world, even though you cannot tangibly see him. But through these invisible qualities, you are able to know you serve the God of gods yeah. because of your faith. You know, your faith, faith is the eyes of a Christian. Faith is the eyes of a Christian. If you do not have faith in your walk with God, you are not, you're not going to see anything spiritual. You're not going to be able to see the tax of Satan. You're not going to be able to see the great things that God is trying to do in your life. Because you refuse to open up your spiritual eyes. Come on, bro. But you know, faith, it, it's, it's willing to trust God yeah. in the midst of you not seeing it. Faith allows you to rely on God. It, it allows you to cling to God. You know, when I think of clinging, I think of that, uh, that movie Twister. I think it came out like in the 90s. And, and man, that movie's scary. Like, yeah. I'm glad we don't live in a, in, in a state of twisters and tornadoes. Yeah. But in that movie, you just see these big old tornadoes, these twisters come out of nowhere, and people are just clinging to you. Like, you see cows flying, you see houses flying. But then you see the people who are just clinging on for dear life. And sometimes that's how we have to be with our faith. That you're, even though you don't see it, even though this tornado of, of a storm that's in your life is, is blowing you in, in side to side, that you're just holding on by faith like, I'm not going to be blown away. Yeah. 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 What, we, what we understand from this is that the audience that was, that was being spoken to, they were struggling in their faith. How do we know this? Well, in chapter 10, when you see the subheading starting in verse 19, it says a call to persevere. So there were some challenges going on in the church. There were some challenges in these people's lives where people were either afraid to serve God, to have faith in Him, or even to believe. And so the author starts to write out a list of those who were commended by their faith. And I love the Bible because it, it helps us in the same exact way. When you lose faith, when you don't see the possibilities that God will do for you, you can be reminded by the scriptures yeah. that you can actually get through what you're getting through. But in verse 5, it talks about why Enoch was taken up to heaven. Because of his faith. You see, if you want to get taken up to heaven, 
you got to have great faith. Come on, bro. Now, I'm not saying that if you just believe right now, like, yeah, oh, God, if I have all the faith in the world, you're just going to teleport me to heaven. That's not what I'm saying. And nor would that probably happen, amen? But that's your faith in Christ, that's your faith in God for the rest of your life. When you die, you should have really teleported to heaven, amen? amen. But walking in faith with God, it implies a friendship. It, it, it implies intimacy. It, it implies love. And when I think about Enoch and many of these people in the Old Testament, I can't help but seeing how confident they were when God said something was going to happen. You know, faith is reaching out in confidence to God. Your faith builds your confidence. Your faith shows God how much confidence you have in Him. Turn with me to John chapter 11. Come on, bro. Good stuff. In John chapter 11. Come on, bro. We're going to look at when Jesus resurrects Lazarus from the dead. Resurrection. And we're going to pick it up in verse 40. Now, Lazarus has died. People are crying. This is the, this is the verse where Jesus says, it says that he wept. Um, but it's a part where a lot of people's faith were tested in God's power. And we're going to pick it up in verse 40. Because I really want you to see the type of confidence that Jesus had in God. And in verse 11, verse 40, it says, Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, thank you. That you I thank you that you have heard me. Verse 43. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was here when Jesus did this, I probably would have been scared. <laughs> like, Jesus, you just blew my mind. You, you literally raised this dead dude who's been in the tomb for three days. He's wrapped up in linen. Man, I would have thought I saw a mummy. I would have been like, Jesus, I, I, just, I just can't with you right now. I, I just need to go and pray real quick. Because I, I just I can't fathom what you just did. You raised this man from the dead. But we see two things from Jesus. You know, he says, then Jesus looked up. I see in verse 4, he says, then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? So when you are walking with, in faith with God, you will see the glory of God. That is a promise. And sometimes when we don't see the glory of God, you have to question yourself. You have to ask yourself, where is my faith at in the miracles of God? Come on, bro. You see, there should be all kinds of miracles happening in this congregation. There should, I should be hearing people just not being quiet of the miracles that God is doing in your life. But because I'm not hearing that, it leads me to believe that many of us are not walking in faith with God. Number two, Jesus makes it clear that if you are walking in faith with God, God's going to hear you. And I'm not talking about like you just send up a prayer and guys, I've heard that, okay? I'm talking about when you say a prayer in faith, God's attention gets grabbed, he hears it, and then he makes something happen about it. Because that's what Jesus says. He goes and he says, hey, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here. Wow. So Jesus, he's like, you know what? I just want to give you guys a freebie just to show you how great my God is. I didn't need to pray this in front of you, but I did it so that you know that if you truly walk with God in faith, He will hear you and your prayers. You see, a weak mind makes a weak faith. Oh. A weak mind 
makes a weak faith. And I believe that we just give in to doubt so easy. Wow. We don't even try to fight the doubt. We, we just sit there and accept the doubt. It's just like, you know what? I, hey, man, I know God. You, you can do all things. But I just, because of my situation, I just don't think you can come up. Wow. Wow. When you are doubtful, that's, that's how God takes it. Yeah. Like, my, my own child does not have confidence in me. Yeah. But what we see is that Jesus, he, he prayed all the time. He prayed regularly. He was devoted. He was addicted to praying. Yeah. But a deep prayer life is the difference between being spiritually dynamic and spiritually dead. Ooh. You see, if you're not seeing dynamic things in Come your on. Christianity, if you're not seeing dynamic things in your walk with God, it's because you are not praying like Jesus prayed. Wow, wow. You know, 1 John 5, verse 14 through 15 says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask for. How confident are you in God this morning? Come on, bro. How confident are you in God this morning? When you walk... By faith, it requires you to go places that you've never been before. Yeah, yeah. When you walk in faith, it requires a strong determination to follow God's plan regardless of your own opinion. Walking by faith, it requires to let God in your life and to mold you and to bend you, to flip your life upside down and to turn it all around all over and over again. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I thought about that, I couldn't help but think that of a time where I, I think I was about 9 or 10 years old, and I, I used to go to my grandmother's house all the time and swim, and I didn't really know how to swim yet, and I couldn't stay on the shallow side, but I was, I was so adventurous, I always wanted to go on the deep side, and I didn't know how to swim, but I would grab the side of the wall all the way over to the deep side, then I would grab the, the diving board and bounce on it, and then grab, you know, I, would, I don't know what what I was thinking. But then I, you know what else made me confident is that I had this little floaty, you know, this little range and whatnot. So I used to jump off the diving board with my floaty because I'm like, I'm not singing, I'm not going anywhere. I don't need nobody. And I'll never forget this one time I, I had my floaty on. I ran up to the diving board, jumped with all my mind, woof, and I slipped and I tipped over. So my, my floaty was, was, my feet were like up dangling in the air. I was literally drowning. I couldn't flip over. I was losing breath. And, I'm, and as a kid, I'm like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I'm going to die. I'm, I don't know what that means, but I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, someone grabs me by the foot and just pulls me up like this. Oh. And like, he literally walks me all the way to the shallow side and pushed me back down. And that, that person was my father. Oh. <laughs> and you know, you know what? I would assume that as a dad, you would be freaking out like, oh my goodness, my son's about to drown. Which he probably was, I just couldn't see him. But the time he picked me up, he was just like, oh. <laughs> But what it taught me was like, man, I can trust in my dad. Yeah. It taught me that, well, I, it, 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 it expanded my faith as my dad being my protector. That I knew that my dad, without a doubt, would be there to catch me when I fell. And yet faith is trust. And when you trust someone, it brings a closeness in your relationship. Yeah. And sometimes you're in a pit, you're upside down, drowning in your life, and here comes God saying, I'm coming. Put you up by your feet, shake you a little bit, and then put you back down. And then you, your faith is built, but then you, you go back in your life, another storm comes, and you just automatically forgot that God just lifted you up out of the water. But we got to understand that our faith draws us closer to God. You know, a person that God did this to a lot was Abraham. Man, Abraham went through some things. God said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And Abraham's like, woo, woo. Okay, God, I'm going to obey. I'm going to follow. I have confidence in you. And because he obeyed and he believed in God, James 2.23 says that Abraham was a friend of God because of his faith. See, if you want to be a friend of God, your faith has to increase tenfold. If you want to walk with God in faith, you have to have 
deep faith. Come on, bro. You know, I want to challenge us this morning. I want to challenge you this week to have confidence in God. Yeah. And show God what confidence you have in Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Point number two. Walking with God means walking in the light. Ooh, on, Turn with me to 1 John chapter 1. Let's go, Eric. Walking with God means walking in light. Come on, Eric. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm afraid of the darkness. I remember as a child, my dad making me go downstairs and go look outside the window and just crazy stuff in the dark. <laughs> I was scared of the dark. But I do think that as disciples, we know what it is to fear the dark. I'm sure we can all relate in some way where you were either claustrophobic, locked in the closet, or something, and how it made you feel. And I believe that as a church, we gotta step it up and walk in the light. We gotta get out of the darkness. Some of us just sit in the darkness. Some of us just like, just love it. Just like, ooh, just by myself, rocking in my sin, rocking in my darkness. I'm loving it here. But you're deceived. Wow. Come on, bro. Let's look at 1 John chapter 1. On, now, right here, in the beginning of the chapter, John starts with this letter with explaining the relationship between the Father and the Son. And in 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, we'll pick it up here. It says, We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Is that not an encouraging passage right there? You know, in verse 3, John makes it clear. He says, we proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. Now, the Greek word for fellowship is koinonia, which means to commune, to share a common bond in a common life. It speaks of living and breathing and sharing in a loving relationship with another person. Now, when John said this, many of his readers who were Greek would have, been, would have understood what this word fellowship meant. Because in the Greek culture, fellowship was everything. They fellowshiped about everything, and, and it, was, it was just their mindset. But what was so revolutionary when they heard this is that, wow, we get to have fellowship, this type of communion, this type of closeness with Jesus the Messiah, with God. This was unheard of. So you have to understand how astounding this is. And for us, we have to understand how astounding it is for us that we get to have a fellowship with the God of the universe. But in verse 3, it also goes on and it talks about how and our fellowship is with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. You see, when you walk in darkness, your joy is assaulted. You cannot understand the fellowship of God. You cannot understand the closeness in which you are to have because darkness is what captivates your soul. And this fellowship is rudely interrupted by darkness. But when John says to walk in darkness, he's not saying, hey, you sinned one time and then, you know, you repented and whatever it used to be. No, he's talking about repetitive. Mm -hmm. That when you are walking in darkness, it is a pattern of life. Mm -hmm. And so he's, he's reminding him, do not walk in the pattern of darkness. Talk about it, but yet we know, guys, that the world, the world is always just begging for our attention. The world is begging for our time, our love, our money, our hearts. And it is those very things that draw us into temptation. But I'm encouraged because in verse 7 it says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus' his son purifies us from all sin. This doesn't mean that you're going to live a perfect, sinless life. You're going to still sin even if you're in a safe relationship with God. 
but that you stopped walking in this pattern of darkness. And when you when you do fall into sin, when you do walk into it, and when you do commit it, God says, if you just have the heart to confess it, to be open, that you may come into the light, you will be forgiven. You see, I don't know about you, but I need continual cleansing. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. We need continual cleansing. But you know, in order to walk in the light, you have to be sensitive to sin. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us are just not sensitive to sin. Yeah, come on, bro. Some, some of us go about our day sinning and don't even think about it. Oh. Here's how oh, I messed up. Amen. Oh. oh. Some of us don't even try to get open about our sin. Wow. Some of us don't even try to get help wow. with our sin through the scripture. Come on, Aaron. And we think it's normal. Wow. You know, a brother that is really dear to my heart that I, I appreciate so much. And that I really want to imitate this heart. Because I feel like I'm far from this heart. I need to really repent in this area of my life. But this brother is Carlos. Oh, my God. Carlos is like the most open brother. Yeah. Yeah, this guy, will, will, he'll just be gut open at where he's at. Yeah. He'll be gut open about his sin with the brothers, with myself. And it's just so inspiring because this guy is sensitive yeah. to his sin. Yeah. His sin does something to his conscience. It does something to his heart. Wow. And because it does that, he wants to be open. He wants to talk about it. But you know what that takes? It takes humility. Yeah. yeah, come on, bro. You see, when you don't want to get open about your sin, it's because you're prideful. Whoa, come on. Bro. And if you read your Bible at all, God opposes the proud. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be opposed by God. We gotta be open with each other. Okay. I want to challenge this to up the openness in this congregation. Come on, bro. So Come on, if, bro. You, if you have been in hidden sin, if you have been walking in darkness, I, will, I beg you, I plead with you this morning, please grab somebody and get open so that you can walk in the light. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Turn with me to Psalms 32. Let's see what it looks like when you don't walk in the light of God. What, what, what does this do to you spiritually? Come on, bro. In Psalm 32, in verse 1. Come on, bro. In verse 1, it says, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groanings all day long. Every day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. You know, what David describes right here is the graciousness of God. Yeah. He describes through verse 1, he, says, he shows us how God graciously treats us. He forgives us. He covers up. And he doesn't count our sin against us if you get open with him. Come on. But look at verse 3. What happens when you do not confess your sin? Come on, bro. For when I keep silent, my bones Wasted away through my groaning all day long. Yeah. You see, unconfessed sin will rot you spiritually. Yeah. That's what David felt. David felt from the inside that he was rotting spiritually if he did not get open about his sin Come on, bro. to the Lord. But you know what else happens? There's some symptoms that go on when you don't confess sin. You lack zeal. Yeah. You lack faith. Come on, bro. You feel distant from God and His people. Yeah. You're untrusting and you're defensive. Whoa. Have you ever tried to like ask someone like, hey, how are you doing, bro? How are you doing? I says, I'm fine. Well, why would you ask me that question? Oh. Whoa. 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 The wicked flee, but no one pursue. Whoa. Bro, what are you struggling with? Why, why are you so defensive? 
That makes you defensive. Hello. In verse 4, David says, For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, and my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. See, when you're in hidden sin, there's just something about God that he just puts his whole hand on your head. And he's just like, I'm just, I'm just waiting for you to get open. I, I just, I, I want to cover up this sin. I want to, I want to show you my glory. I want to give you this grace that I just want to lavish on it. But just stop being prideful. Yeah. And God is just has His finger on you, and you're just like, why is my life horrible? Why am I going through this? Why, why, God? Why, why, why? It's because there's something deep in your heart that you have yet to confess. Yeah. I want to challenge you this morning. Walk in the light with God. Yeah. Come on, bro. But also walk in the light with one another. Yeah. Point number three. Walking with God is having the mindset of God. Turn with me to Philippians chapter two. Come on, bro. Come on, Eric. Philippians chapter two. Walking with God is having the mindset of God. Come on, bro. Go you know what I think of? Having the mindset of God or, or just somebody, there's a couple things I think about. I think about the mannerisms that you pick up. Have you ever hung around somebody enough where you start to talk like them a little bit? You start to act like them a little bit? You start to dance like them a little bit? You know, there's like so many people in my life, right? you know, my mentors, my leaders, who I picked up little things and I, I say that I'm like, oh, that was, that was so easy. Yeah, yeah. That was so and so. And even the people that I disciple, I actually pick up a lot of their mannerisms. Yeah. And I don't even pick up a lot of my mannerisms yeah. as well. Yeah. But when you pick up those mannerisms, it shows that you're starting to walk with them. Yeah. You're starting to think like them. You're starting to, to behave like them in some way. And this is the same way that we must act when it comes to our relationship with God. Come on, come on. I'm going to ask you this morning, are you picking up Jesus' mannerisms? Whoa. See, you can tell that someone is walking with Jesus because they act like Jesus. Okay. They behave like Jesus. They say things like Jesus. Yeah. Are you picking up Jesus' mannerisms? Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's look at Philippians chapter 2. Let's look at some of Jesus' mannerisms. Come on, Amen. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Come on, Eric. Oh, yeah. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in the likeness of humans, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. You know, Paul right here states what it is to look like Jesus. Yeah. The mindset of Jesus in this very passage was humility and servitude. Wow. There was no hint of entitlement from Jesus. You know, it says, who being in very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped but made himself nothing. Jesus, even though he could, he didn't. He could have protectively, selfishly grasped his privileges of divinity. He could have said, hey, I am the God of the universe. Me come down and die for you? Me come down and serve you? Me come down and die on the cross for you? His humility that he had. In verse 7, it says, but he made himself nothing. The Greek word here means to empty himself. You see, that just shows the nature of God and his mindset. I want to teach my creation how to be humble, how to be serving, how not to be arrogant and entitled. That if you think you hit a certain level in your walk with God, that you don't do the things that you used to do anymore. That you don't serve the way you used to when you were a young Christian. Yeah, yeah. Fired up just to serve God. Come on. Come on. You know, having the mindset of Jesus means asking ourselves, what does Jesus value? You know, Jesus, he values and, and he desires to bring God glory. Yeah. He desires to see people be saved. 
He desires to have a compassionate heart. And he desires to be fully dependent on God. Yeah. Has that been your mindset this morning? Have you been able to just soberly think, man, what areas in my life do I not have the mindset of Jesus? And I want to challenge us that each and every person in this room serves somebody this week. Come on. Come on. I, I want to challenge you to humble yourself. Yeah. To not feel entitled like, man, this person should go do this. This person should, should go do this and do that and da 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 You do it. Yeah, come on, bro. Have the very nature of God by being a servant. Yeah. Turn me to Colossians as we close. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Hope we're learning this morning of yeah. what it looks like to walk with the Creator. Yeah, come on, bro. And this is a, a scripture that I believe if we hold on dearly to, you will walk with God within eternity. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Come on, bro. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above. When Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things above, not earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Paul right here says, set your hearts on things above. See, you know that if your heart is set on earthly things, it is not set above. But the best, the, 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 the best disciple living is when you have your mind fixed on heaven. When you have your mind fixed on Jesus. I love the scripture that Aleem and Amanda read today. To focus on Jesus. And I believe, family, that if you focus and you set your minds on, on walking in faith with God. Yeah. And, you, and you set your mind to walk purely in the light of Christ. Then you will walk in eternity with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.